and uh, good evening my friends once again um today i want to talk about uh, first of all what has just uh, uh, happened right now the world cup uh, draws that uh, uh for the qatar 20 uh, 2022 world cup um privileged to have watched them and um uh, basically it's a good thing actually when i saw the draws uh i was rather excited i was rather excited about the draws uh that placed uh, mali uganda kenya and rwanda in the same group well in my mind i was thinking that i think uh sekafa has done us a, a real injustice because i i am already excited to see Uganda playing Kenya in a two-legged home and away. You see Kenya, Rwanda playing home and away. Uh, Sekafa has really done injustice to football in the region that uh, they have failed to advance football, to take it to the people. Uh, they, uh, these Sekafa tournaments that take place and uh, are crowded in one country, I think uh, it has killed football a lot. People have lost, uh, I mean, interest recently you see these Sekafa tournaments being held people are not even watching them they have lost interest and yet we could uh, rebrand it just like um, the way the South Africans rebranded their uh, Kosafa uh, I mean that uh, rebranding will make uh, makes uh, this thing interesting because you have a game that is played if uh, Sekafa was played in this kind of format where it's a home and away basis. Uganda plays in Kenya, and we don't have to play it in one week, two weeks. We can actually spread it all around the year because sometimes we have these uh, international breaks and we have uh, friendly matches. Sometimes we can't have them. Sekafa should organize it that in those points in time, um, that's when uh, we have this Sekafa tournament being uh, played. And uh, you have Kenya versus Rwanda. Uganda versus Tanzania and uh, people the interest of people will you will spur the interest of people now the world cup qualifiers has actually brought us what we have been looking for to have these nations play in a home and away basis where if Kenya comes to uh, Nambole the excitement will be out there if Rwanda comes to Nambole you know so this is what Sakafa should have been doing for us to bring this football to us whether it is for the clubs whether it's for the countries but they sit i don't know what they think about all the time you know they sit in those places nice hotels and come up with things that don't really make sense at all they don't just make sense and uh, you have uh, a game between kenya and uganda and it's in a place where nobody is watching they have uh, you know so sekafa should style up and uh, uh, the the World Cup draws have actually thrown to us this this group, which is very very interesting, in a way that it should show us how we can market football, because football uh, we are going to make money. Actually, there's there's a lot of money to be made in these fixtures. The Uganda versus Kenya, Kenya versus Rwanda, Rwanda versus Uganda. I mean. The marketing for these games should be up there, and I'm sure the, uh, the federation and everybody concerned with this is going to uh, reap. And of course, the excitement for the fans. Not about only financials, but also the excitement for the fans. We are excited to actually beat up on Kenya. And for Rwanda, I, I, I believe me, um, it's exciting. It's mouth watering. Uganda versus Rwanda is mouth watering. You can't ask for anything bigger than this. You see, uh, Uganda versus Egypt is, uh, yes, a big game. But for sentimental values, you are not going to enjoy the... You know, you're going to watch Mo Salah, yes. But for, for Rwanda, it's about the passion of it now. Football is about passion. It's driven by passion. Now, Sekafa has failed to tap into this. And that's why our game in the East African region has sort of uh, taken the back seat. Uh, that's why we celebrate uh, a footballer when... Uh, uh, Samata goes to Aston Villa, we celebrate. But when uh, do we celebrate the others, the Ugandans, especially the Ugandans? When do we celebrate a Ghana in the Premiership? Kenya has uh, Wanyama in Spurs. Now Tanzania has Samata. Uh, Burundi, I think one time, also had um, 
uh, a player in Newcastle. I mean, when do the Ugandans get there? But we must start by organizing our uh, region, how our region plays football. So the World Cup uh, qualifier that has thrown Uganda, Kenya and Rwanda in the same group, I, I think it's God sent. It should uh, be something that is uh, to help us as a region to see how well we can market the passion that uh, is uh, there that uh, people uh, that people actually want to watch our local football and the passions in there so uh, this simply this is i think uh, an eye opener to all the federations of east africa then the, the secafa and all that stuff i think this is good stuff for us and uh, hopefully we shall enjoy this but the what i actually I'd want to talk about today is uh, uh ugandans uh, playing uh, football out there you know uh, there has been a, a big problem people talk about oh, why do Ugandans uh, fail why uh, and uh, we don't address the issue we actually make sh we just laugh it off like we just laugh at, at it when people actually um, when when one of them has failed then we laugh then but what is the problem what is definitely the problem Ugandans why are Ugandans failing to uh, prosper, like uh, maybe cut through like the other people in, uh, in in our neighboring countries? Where why do they? Why would Kenya have a Mariga uh, play at uh, at Inter Milan, Wanyama play at uh, Spurs? Uh, I mean, all these Kenyans. You have another one, uh, Origi, playing. Although he's from Belgium, but he's actually a Kenyan from playing for, for Liverpool. Uh, then I have Samata playing uh, at Aston Villa. So what is the question? The question is this. What is the problem, actually? Not the question, but the problem. And uh, you have to look at it and be a bit academic when you're looking at these things and see how we can help uh, our players uh, get into these, these ranks. It's not just about wishing. It has something that has to be done and something that is fundamental. Eh? Just like the way we export labor to uh, Middle East uh, and things have gone bad. Of course, there are problems there. So we, we'll talk about football and say, why, why are we failing to export this uh, football labor uh, out of Uganda and in the best possible uh, kind of way? So I looked at uh, basically eight points that uh, I want to discuss uh, tonight. One is the sports culture of Uganda. Our sports culture in Uganda is uh, very bad. Um, or starting, of course, starting uh, from the the government of Uganda. The government of Uganda doesn't um, look at sports as a, as a key factor in economic growth. Uh, while other countries, actually, uh, the first world countries, uh, even the third world countries like Brazil and uh, all these other countries of the world, look at it as a an economic factor, uh, Uganda has failed up to now to look at it that way. So that is why you will not have legislation that is uh, geared towards uh, pushing uh, the industry uh, to become uh, bigger and uh, better. Uh, that's why you will have uh, a National Council of Sports Act of 1964 that they have uh, mishandled since... Uh, I think 2012 when uh, Madame Alupo brought it, but has not worked. You have uh, an obsolete National Council of Sports that just sits at that and does nothing. So all these contribute to why our players are actually not going to make it. Because if you don't have a, a structure that is actually allowing them to succeed, then you are going to have a problem. The bigger problem is coming, but... We have to look at the fundamentals. What are the fundamentals? The first fundamental is our sports culture is very bad in the country. Uh, because this, Uganda is a country where the, our sports facilities are so dilapidated. And uh, you wonder, okay, if uh, if the players are going to play in, in, in Nambole, where did they come from? Which facilities did they play from in their neighborhoods? Uh, because, you see, you're going to... Uganda is a place where a neighborhood doesn't even have a football ground. These days, we even license schools without uh, playgrounds. Uh, you have no playgrounds in the school, but continuously you license the schools. A school without playing, where where was that? Uh, where is that? How can that be actually be accepted? So, 
you you cannot start to think about professional uh, footballers even athletes when they are growing up without playing and then in the future you expect to have a very good uh, uh, professional uh, footballer so the sports culture of the country is uh, is almost dead because uh, sports grounds are longer there you hardly see because now you see uh, academies have to look for small grounds half an acre uh, just half an acre and just quarter an acre to put a, 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 a surface of pot to play and that shouldn't be like that so for us to get we have to go back to the basics the sports culture the ministry of education and sports uh, the national council of sports i mean how do we develop this curriculum to allow kids to actually first of all play in school if kids cannot play in school then forget about the professional footballers in the future, the ones we look at to play at us and not, we shall not get them for as long as our culture of uh, of sports in the country does not change. Two, uh, uh, the first point I talk about is the uh, sports culture. The second one is education versus sports. Uh, in Uganda, we have uh, it has been a problem that uh, choose actually they force ch children to choose those ones who who choose sports most times don't go to school most times don't go to school and even those ones who uh go to school only okay like go to school but will not uh, study but just go to school so how do you inculcate an uh, education system that allows somebody to be uh, properly educated and play sports also or even major in sports while in school because if somebody is very good in sports, allow them to play this sport. Allow them to play. Because uh, we have seen that uh, what happens is that uh, the, the sports people are actually thriving a lot. And uh, in Africa, the education system is sort of churning out as many graduates but uh, cannot uh, sustain themselves. And yet we have seen that sports people can actually sustain themselves. If sports people are given the platform, then you are not going to look for job people seeking for jobs no they are going to play entertain you and uh, they'll make their own money the, uh, and probably even bring in income uh, for the country so the education versus sports we must find a balance if a person is in school uh, it doesn't mean that uh, because most schools will concentrate on passing their kids academically and fail them uh, socially because socially would mean that they they cannot socialize the uh, the uh, the sports values the values that sports brings into um into a person are all thrown up through the window so after that uh, people will suffer of course uh, the people will actually suffer because now one of the reasons Ugandan footballers don't succeed is because of that sports lack lacking education and then not uh, not have done very well in sports because they were not given enough time in sports and neither were they given enough time with education. So you, one either they, they take sports and completely fall out of school or they take education and completely fall out of sports. So that balance uh, leaves uh, us uh, wanting in those areas. So you find that the la this lack of education brings about people failing to read their contracts. And that is very... Uh, uh, because now the languages, first of all, the languages that they're going to use, international languages, if you want to play, for example, now there is a big market of Ugandan footballers playing in, probably in uh, in North Africa. So they are, you, you are going to you are going to be dealing with languages like uh, English, French, probably now Arabic that is coming in now. Where are you going to learn? Because even the language that we speak English, most of our footballers find difficulties in... Um, in speaking the language. Why? Because the f the formative education, uh, form they did not attend it. And those ones who attended it, you were just there. So, one, they're failing to read the contracts. Or, even because I, I see some of the people even representing them, uh, like the agents, if it's from Uganda, some of them, probably even the... the the formation of those contracts probably even defeats the people who are representing these uh, uh, these people. So that education versus sports, we must make sure that uh, education can allow uh, sportsmen to thrive in the education system so that 
as much as they are footballers, they are allowed to play. First of all, allow them to play, then make a curriculum that allows them also to attend school so that they can get the basic education that allows them to further their sports career. Because the sports career can actually turn out to be their source of income in, uh, in the future. So if they can read and write and comprehend also, because read and writing and without comprehension is also another thing. So if they can read, write and comprehend, then they are likely to see what their contracts say. Are these contracts favoring them or for them they're just going? Because most of our footballers move into these uh, uh, professional ranks just like uh, herding ships, a ship to a crawl or something like that because they, they get somebody representative, they get somebody a middleman, then they, they just uh, uh, shepherd them into these clubs and the next thing you know, uh, the person has a, a contract probably that is reading more years than he thinks. Of course, in Uganda it's already happening. In the Uganda League, you find a player has never seen his contract, and it's, it, he tells you, have two years, then by the time you read the contract, actually it says five. So that kind of uh, education is needed, and that's why they don't succeed, because that uh, it, uh, it makes the footballers um, get frustrated, because the frustration of, first of all, not knowing what is in your contract, then discovering that it is something else. Probably you thought they were paying you this much, now they are paying you this much, then the player gets frustrated, because of that lack of education, because if had, he had been educated enough and read it, probably he would have rejected it. Or uh, taken it knowing, and then you have to stay the course of, of that, of the distance for the contract. So it is very important. Sports versus education. So for us to succeed, for to have a footballer succeed, you need, like I said, the government has, in, one, improved the sports culture of the country. Then two, the education versus sports if we can get that, then we are we are going to get there. Then uh, number three is uh, the formative levels, the basic formative levels, especially in our country, uh, Uganda, because this is very important to know where we are coming from and the society we are coming from. Uh, because I said, why our, our players? Why aren't they succeeding? It is you have to look at the formative years, the formative years of Ugandans and children, how Ugandan children are actually uh, brought up, brought up up. Uh, you find like in uh, probably in my years as, as growing up and people of uh, the same age uh, with me will we, we'll actually know that the first time uh, probably a child is allowed to turn on the, the television when I was growing up, um, you must have been om almost like in S1 or S2 to, to just turn on the television, to turn it on. and uh, uh, So now a person who has no... Uh, what do I call it? Uh, somebody who cannot, uh, it doesn't have that confidence in them, because our upbringing knocks out people's confidence completely. Uh, you find Ugandan children will not uh, 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 say stand up to you to tell you exactly what they think. And once a player stands, I mean a child stands up and tells the parents, no, 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 I will not do that. Then they say that kid is very indisciplined, and now that knocks all the confidence out of. People. That's why children in Uganda, things are done to children and you'll never know. Why? Because a child cannot tell a grown-up that something is wrong because most times kids are being reprimanded. So this thing grows up uh, in, in people and all this has to, because the parentage will knock confidence out of people. That's why you find that some people in the origins are more confident. Why are Nigerians, when you meet a Nigerian, let's say you travel and you meet a Nigerian, they are very, very confident people. They'll stand up and say, they will, even those ones I've met in Uganda while I was coaching. A Nigerian footballer will walk to you and tell you he's the best player you are, you're ever going to see. So sometimes you wonder, where is this guy getting all this confidence? Like, he walks up to you, but a Ugandan footballer to come, a, even a very good one, will come to your club and sit under a tree and hopefully somebody spots him and tells him, oh, coach, that is a, a player he can play because we need all the time to be pushed, somebody to talk for us and what. So we lack that confidence. But the confidence is knocked out of us as as young people, not even only footballers, even even coaches, because I've met very many coaches who are, who cannot express themselves. And who find probably a person like me too rudimentary? How can coach stand up and say such a thing? How can you express yourself in such a way? You don't respect people when you uh, say uh, you have an opinion to put out there or a fact to put out there. So this is parents have to change the way their children are brought up. 
to help them in future because i'm talking about football but it even in something else even in uh, if you look at uh, kids from university who come to looking for jobs if you are an employer and you met a, a, a graduate from Macquarie university or uc or any other place that lack of confidence is there you find an educated person who lacks confidence who cannot look at you straight in the eye to express what they think how they feel and then because now if you if a player moves to these uh, uh, advanced leagues out there the player is going to be put to a Q and A questions. The coach needs to know things about you. Now the the player is looking down, cannot look straight in in the coach's eye. The player will not ask because if you ask, you get the question. If you ask the question, you get the right answers. Now players arrive at a, a training ground. Probably um, you have a, a training schedule that has been put out, like now in in European countries, America. The training schedule is put out. The player has to read it. No coach is going to explain to you the training schedule for the day because it was put on the notes board. You had to read it. And ours probably will not read or have the impotence even to ask what is going on. Then you, you show up with the wrong gear, with the wrong attire. You don't know what you're going to do. So all the things bring about all the things. Because of uh, uh, when you have uh, the formative years, you have been knocked up, up, up and down. You have no confidence at all. You just don't have confidence. So if you have no confidence, then you are likely to fail. You are going to fail because you lack the confidence in the things. Even the things that you know how to do, you will not do them just because you lack the confidence. So the formative years, once the parents, the teachers, because now the teachers in schools uh, absolutely destroy uh, 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 the students because uh, you, there's no interaction. There's no that interaction, teacher-student interaction, where the, the student will ask questions and not and not fear to be reprimanded for 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 doing the the wrong things. Now the other thing uh, that's formative. Now, of course, like I said, for the upbringing, the upbringing, our upbringing as Ugandans, uh, most times we are supposed to be meek and humble. A meek and humble child is deemed to be a very good uh, child. Hmm? A, person, a, a child who does not talk back to elders is a very good child. A, a, a child who keeps quiet is not, actually a child in Uganda is not supposed to be uh, heard but seen. Eh? You're supposed to, to be sit in a corner, keep quiet, and not be heard because if you talk, then they say, "Hey, if you play, eh, you, no, no, don't play." If you, you know, so that upbringing cannot help us in. Uh, societies that have developed and that's why our footballers get problems because we don't have that char charisma to go out there uh, even uh, sell yourself as a person like i sit here and i sell myself and say i am very good i'm a very good footballer i am left footed i can play left back center back they won't tell you so uh, you ask the player which is your uh, f uh, strong position he he doesn't they don't, first of all they don't even know the positions on the field of play and yet they have actually played football for a period of time so we ask them because i have been with footballers in in uganda i think uh, about five football clubs and most times i would try to have these lessons with them you have these lessons with these footballers and most of them did not even want to be in those classes because it was uh, a waste of time and what actually uh, i remember one time in one of the clubs that i was in a footballer told me that, you know, the time I waste in classes, they would need the time to actually go out there and uh, get themselves wives and what. So you can see how... Uh, uh, so because they're not used to being uh, uh, taught from formative years, so when you get them to teach them... Uh, the, the basic, because even placement of footballers on the field of play, systems uh, of play, these are taught in classes. But you find you Ugandan footballers don't want to learn those things. Why? Because of the formative years, upbringing. You tell a player, place these uh, footballers on the field or play in this formation. Then they think you're trying to probably make uh, football very difficult for them. So the upbringing of our society, of making people meek, it even goes up uh, when you grow up and you, let's say even the federation, because the federation also bridge this kind of uh, system where uh, players are not supposed to, to speak. If a player asks for the allowances or delay of allowances, that means that one is indisciplined. If a player does indiscipline, so the word indiscipline is used on any player who is uh, outgoing and assertive. So they knock out this thing out of you 
then when you go out there you know then you believe it is the norm so the norm means that you are not supposed to be assertive uh, you're supposed to be meek you're supposed to be humble and the next thing you know you have actually failed to adjust to the situation because situations out there are uh, very i mean brutal the competition is very very brutal players are struggling for places uh if you've coached uh, uh, uh for example a university team uh, players the players in the university team are trying to get their scholarships on so uh, if you get a Ugandan player who is coming to play probably football in uh, let's say in the US they're going to find problems because these guys are competing for these scholarships seriously so they are not going to allow you to to come in with your meekness they will do everything possible to get ahead of you so our upbringing kills us we go to these places and that's where we we will fail then the education and literacy levels now like i'd said uh, education versus sports but there's literacy levels our players are lagging behind in the literacy the the literacy levels uh, reading writing comprehension eh? and and usually uh, most of them cannot uh, of course uh, somebody will say that it's not important to to speak english and I probably will I, I will concur with you but only if uh, probably the language that we are speaking is uh, uh, internationally acceptable because now if our players are speaking probably luganda and very few speak Swahili. So, if you go to these Arab countries, into the French countries, you now Israel is one of the destinations. And I mean, those countries don't have that language. So, which language, literate language, are you going to speak as a Ugandan? You must find that language that you're going to speak as a lang uh, as medium of communication. How do you communicate? And you cannot speak any language that is internationally acceptable. In Uganda we have English. As much as people have tried to beat down on this English thing, our footballers need to learn how to speak English. And I've told footballers that I've told before who can speak English, I mean, to take English classes because they were there, I think there's a place one time called Difra teaching people how to speak English and write it. Because you might not be able to say I am a university graduate, but I can speak English and write it. So my ability as a footballer is going to be supported by my ability to write English and speak English. So when I speak and write English, then I am going to read, understand, you read the contract, you read the training schedules, you read the, the, the manuals by the football club, you read even directions because some people get lost because they cannot even read a direction to say uh, the football field is on the left and you cannot read it. And you probably get lost on the right and appear this side 30 minutes late and the next thing you know, you have been reprimanded. Why? Because of just being literate on a few things. Okay? Of course, not bring about... So, we must be literate. It might not be education to the level of saying I have a degree, I have a, uh, it a PhD or something like that, but literate enough to understand that my talent as a footballer is supported by my ability to speak a language that uh, people will understand and communicate with me. So we must, as a country, push our footballers. If we need to, of course, first of all, you must remember that the government has to come out and actually put up and say, yes, football is a, an industry that we need to invest in because it can actually bring returns. I hope I see that in the near future and we pray for that all the time. That actually, first of all, uh, you're going to get a sports minister, not uh, one who is under an education, but one who is an independent minister who is thinking sports, 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 sports. So that literacy level is very, that as a, a number five point. Now, number six is the football education. Now, uh, most Ugandan football players will meet a uh, let's say a, f a football, the real football, at the age of ten or eleven, and that that has been a very big factor because um, in societies where we are, uh, probably if you have grown up in a rural setting, 
you would never have met a, a, a football a real football you don't meet it and if you meet it you meet one which is bigger than you so you're around seven years but you're kicking a ball that's supposed to be kicked by somebody who is uh, a mature person so that is also a problem you not meet the right size of ball you not even meet the ball so by the time you actually read uh, a real football you're probably in s1 when you've you've gone to uh to to the school uh, when you've gone to a school that has a uh, uh, a football and footballs in the in the stores then the first time you actually meet a coach a qualified coach because in all your formative years of football education you are actually meeting your games master so most kids start up by meeting their games masters who are not football literate they are just games masters of jump uh, frog jump skip the rope uh, kick the ball you know because football is a very easy game to understand two goals and the lines and what and you score in one goal and score in the other and that's that happens to be now by the time kids actually really learn the basics of this game how to handle football how to pass the football how to control a football body positioning and all the things are supposed to be taught at uh, the early years of uh, Starting from, uh, because I've seen kids uh, of three years, uh, two years, uh, given a ball to acclimatize with it. So by the time they are six, they actually know that this ball, they can manipulate the ball. Now by the time ours meet the ball, usually they are 12, 13. And uh, then, of course, you will have this problem of uh, now throwing them back in two years that are not, uh, are not theirs. So you get a 14-year-old now being pushed to, to be playing in under. 10. Why? Because our body size is usually a small, so they're like a 14-year-old can play in under 10. Then we begin the process there. That's when we begin the cheating of age and all that stuff and giving these kids the, the wrong ages and all all that time. So the, the football education is very important uh, for us to actually, and that's one of the reasons that we fail because of our football education. Yes, you find a player is can play football, but you, you look at the basics of uh, ball handling uh, how how long it takes for a player to bring the ball under control how the player passes the, a ball to a, an opponent right next to him or an opponent very far from him so these are the things some of these uh, uh, scouts and international coaches are looking at and then they give they give us away when you are playing uh, in a game so you go to a team and uh, everybody's like wow that player takes so long to control the ball the, the thinking now, of course, when you go back to the thinking, like I told you, you go up to the upbringing because our upbringing does not allow us to think. So, and in football, you must think a bit faster because uh, footballers in the Western world, you find that they might not be as skillful as uh, probably the African players who have that natural ability to, to do things. But they are smarter, usually. And smartness does not mean that uh, uh, they are smarter than us genetically. No, it's because of the upbringing. Because you find... Uh, a two-year, three-year-old in the Western world will manipulate uh, a smartphone. But our kids meet the f uh, smartphones when they're in secondary schools. That's the first time probably it's for that's when you meet a smartphone and begin to manipulate it. And yet, then by the time you meet somebody who, has see, who saw it when they were two, and then the brain, of course, w works faster. If, if you stimulate the brain younger, it works. It's a, it has nothing to do with genetics of being white, black. No. It, it's about exposure. How did you expose this person, this particular person, to this thing? That's why you find that people, uh, Ugandans who have been, uh, uh, for example, born out of the country, will probably have another level of uh, thinking and assimilation. And that does not make them brighter than this people, but because they were exposed faster than... So, if you we don't expose these kids to the football education, uh, the basics fast then we are going to have problems we shall continue having the same problems because uh, we are going to keep on uh, exporting these football players who have not gone through the proper footballing system and they will get there and still get problems that's why you find that they will always uh, it's, it's difficult now to get a, a Ghanaian footballer who has lasted uh, maybe apart from Onyango who has been in a football club and been there from like uh, usually one year is the maximum because if you've been looking at the trends, one year 
is that is it. After the first contract, probably they either terminate it, the player walks out, something always happens, and they will no, not tell you what exactly really happens. But these are the problems. These are the problems it, because the club also gets uh, will try to get another player who probably technically is better than this one because he was taught a bit better in the informative years, the education. And of course, also that brings about that because now, for example, the coaching education, uh, which began, I think, a, about a, a few years back, because the first co co serious coaching courses uh, about maybe, I think, uh, 2000, 2011, that was the first time the I think a coaching syllabus in Uganda was introduced. But previously, you'd have these uh, foreign expatriates who'd come in here, give us uh, a week or two course coaching courses. Then you spend uh, about three years or four years, whatever, doing something else. And even then, the coaching um, uh, sessions in Uganda, uh, the, the way they are compacted, and you find that uh, a whole coaching uh, uh, license will take three weeks or two weeks actually tops get a coaching license in Uganda and you compound all that kind of education so the, the person getting the education is that person going to get it and transfer it to the to the other person that is needed so that's the coaching education that will because if the coaches don't know as much or they, they, they put so much in your head that you cannot even remember the first thing they told you then you definitely are going to what? You are definitely going to have uh, 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 problems in what? In the education and literature levels, then the uh, going uh, about to maybe conclude this. The seventh one is the parental uh, parent and guidance. Most of our footballers um, lack the parental guidance, and uh, and most of them end up being, let's say, like uh, they they become breadwinners after not being educated very well in the profession that they're in. And uh, they will have no parental guidance and anything, you know, they have fallen off the radar. Because I have seen it when, even locally, without even going internationally, when a player is probably, uh, you get a player maybe from as far as probably, let's say, Arua or, or Soroti or Kavale, you bring them to Kampala and, uh, and they have come with nothing, absolutely nothing. So for as soon as they get their first probably, if you give the player a sign-on fee, give the player maybe a, a two, two, three, four million here, all of a sudden, uh, the perceptions change, the way they do the things change. He's probably going to pick up a girlfriend or two or three. Uh, because the things that he, he was not being able to do, he will buy himself a big TV, which is normal. Every kid would want it, but... But the, the the parental guidance to 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 manhood that these kids need now when you when they didn't have it because like I'd said before in Uganda we don't we just instruct the children sit down keep quiet we don't interact with them to tell them this thing this thing, and that so at the very end when they are by themselves then they start doing things that probably they shouldn't have done they they or or even to say things they shouldn't have said. Uh, societies to learn when you when you are uh, educated and uh, educated to a certain stage, then you'll understand that some societies behave like this. So when I join a society, I have to assimilate into that society. I cannot take my mannerisms into this society, you know. So th that is how you are supposed to make sure that that. Uh, the parental guidance comes in. How do they spend their money? In Uganda, if you tell a player how to spend their money, most times they will tell you the coach wants their money. Probably the coach is trying to help you. I'm not saying that then the coaches, some coaches will not ask for this money. But most times they're trying to help you. Don't spend it. Do this wisely. No. So that is the the other side, the guidance. How much are they guided? Because after probably the agent has... Uh, in his cut, that is it. Because usually the agent is looking for his cut. If the agent can get his cut, send you the player there, then you're good to go. So, how how where is the guidance? Because sometimes even the parents, you pick a, a, a player from a place and the parent doesn't even know that the player ever plays through. Because I've been with so many of these players and you actually get to know that the parent and the child are actually disconnected. And you find that actually, you can actually take this child to Kampala, be with the child in Kampala, and the parent will never call you. Because I've been in some situations where you get a, a player, 
from the probably post-primary championships, you take the player, for example, when I was in Luzira, I take the player to Luzira. I live the, with the player in Luzira for over a year and the parent has never called you. And yet the kid goes to school. You found a school for the child. The, the parent will never call you to say, uh, which school is my child? No. Even if you transferred the, the child from school to school, like is the norm in Uganda, today he's in this school, the next day in the other school, as long as he's playing football, in six years in, in six different schools, the parent is not bothered. So that disconnect also is very terrible because now the parent has given the authority to the coach whom they don't even know, whom they don't even call. Because, I mean, I would call you to find out oh, how is my child, how is the parent doing that. Even on holidays, you find the child doesn't go back home, stays at the club. For So that parental guidance also lacking. It contributes a lot in the future endeavors of these people. Because if you don't have that parental guidance to be grounded from what go, then you'll always have a problem. So lastly, <laughs> and most importantly, is our society. See, our society cheers failures a lot. And you, the success stories will not be heard. Because if the success stories are being heard, then we would... Uh, as a country or as a federation or as a football community, uh, have Onyango travel to different places to talk to footballers. Because he's an, an example of success. But we don't. But once a player fails, the headline will read and we, 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 it's talking point. Oh, so and so failed uh, in, uh, in this league. Oh, so and so failed in this league. So and so failed in this league. But the success stories are not told. Uh, the people who have succeeded, what have we done to make sure that these people who have succeeded actually have even seminars? Because in Uganda, it is that critical that we can actually have these people talk to these other players on a regular basis to tell them exactly what is going on. We have had Azira playing in the MLS and he has been successful. But instead we sort of shun them, we discard them. Uh, I don't know why we have a problem with the people who stand out and succeed as a society. Because our society is um, uh, what, what, uh, what in prisons we used to term as the PhD. Pull him down. PhD. So we say, yeah, that, that one has a PhD. In pull him down. If somebody succeeds above this, then every, the rest of us are trying to make sure we pull the fella down. Instead of saying no, let us uh, make sure that uh, we, we we spar them, and then we get those ones that have succeeded and make sure that they become focal points, not because the way we feel about them. Oboa is one of them. We could have used Oboa as an ambassador for footballers, but uh, because most of us, his personality is too strong. Most of us do not appreciate it. So you say, ah, no, no, that one is uh, poorly behaved. No, because he has a very strong personality. You cannot succeed in professional ranks without a, a very strong personality. You must have it. So you get these people like Obua, Onyango, Mike Azira, and let them have interactions with these young budding players. That, But what happens is that instead those ones are trying to be silenced because uh, those ones will create... Uh, acrimony among us because these ones will come and tell you no no you're not supposed to do that professionally then you will get a, a, a problem the problem will come and then they start saying oh these people are leading others to misbehave all this pub I mean, so we must get uh, such cheering success stories in our uh, societies and uh, not just um, uh, cheering the, the ones that have failed and now those ones who are out there those ones who are out there because I'm sure Whenever I speak, most of these players are online. They're actually watching me. Those ones are out there. Make an endeavor to understand some of these things. Remember, because some of you, I have met with you and spoken to you, all those people that have coached. I've actually talked to you all about the things about professionalism, about education, about uh, literacy, about all the things. Because they are very important to make a professional uh, person. To make our Ugandans succeed. Because the more Ugandans that succeed, the better for our country, the better for the sports uh, industry, and even the, the future people. Because if one succeeds in a country, then they'll ask for the others. They'll ask for the other footballers and say, hey, are there more footballers in this country? 
but if uh, we don't succeed then we probably we are going to have a, a what a big uh, a big ask and a big problem in the future so uh for those uh, football friends out there i mean we can still discuss about this how do we make uh, uh this uh how do we make uh, football better how do we improve our football players and of course uh, before i leave like going back about the world cup fixture it's a very good thing i hope the people in uh, in football management in, in these sekafa countries uh, can uh, can actually uh, like hit the iron when it's hot because uh, what what FIFA has done is given us a group that can rejuvenate Af East African football back again. But also, uh, uh, these people should take an example of this and make this Sekafa in the same format that we have because on so many forums we have talked about the format of this Sekafa. This one week, two week thing in a country I think should stop. We should have this Sekafa spread around the year so that people are excited to see these teams play and we make sure that we, we play them on international breaks so that we can have all our international players in so if Kenya is playing in Sekafa we expect to see Wanyama, we expect to see Onyango we don't, in this third it improves and even the local players will have to compete so hard to make sure that they, they hit the levels of what to, to make uh, the Ugandan team because uh, right now playing for the Cranes I think in the last 10 years has been devalued Everybody has played for the cranes. Everybody has virtually played for the cranes. So the value also goes down. Who is a national team player? Does everybody qualify to play in uh, the national team and get a cup? So we have to... And even if even if we don't use uh, the senior players in the Sakafa, but at least we should make sure that we hype these games for what they should be and what they have to be. So... Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for watching. Uh, I hope to to be with you uh, in the coming uh, days. Have a blessed evening.